Ugh. Oh. Oh, hey guys. I'm Rosalvane, and welcome back to another Roz vlog. So, yeah, that was the weirdest introduction. I, I just jumped in out of the blue. Anyways, welcome to my new setup for the Roz vlog. So this is how it's gonna look like from here on out, I guess, maybe. Um, of course, you can see the TV monitor here. That is my uh, new computer screen, or that's not my new computer screen. That's my TV screen, and that's where gameplays and all that stuff will happen, probably in the background. And maybe uh, I don't know. I might have a box sitting up here. I'll probably edit the box up there if there's ever a need, which you guys will be seeing it in this video, of course, because this today, this Ross vlog is to present my new computer. And yes, this I forgot to also mention that this camera is a Logitech C920, and so far this has been pretty high quality I would say I'm looking at my screen I'm sorry the laptop is being the one who's recording this all and the footage will be put into the laptop and not on this computer because the USB wire is too far or somewhat far I could have just plugged it on the top of the computer monitor and use that but or, I mean the computer top whatever it is what whatever doesn't matter anyways let's get it right into the review um, I actually before we actually went to go into the review actually um, I'm planning on splitting this Ross vlog into two because one of them is the review and overall thing about this computer and the other one is based upon the stuff we are going to be updating for the channel and stuff like that. Anyways, let's get on moving right now. Anyways, so let's first start off with the, or let's, let's start off with the specs for the computer of course because that's what most people want out of it and then I'll give it a, a hands on review. Not Hands on review of the computer itself, but the company who built it and I bought it from, of course. So let's start off with the, the specs. And also, you guys can check down the description box down below for this whole full, full, full list if I missed anything. And if I didn't, then yeah, of course, it'll be here anyways. And yeah, so description box, if you guys don't want to hear me talk all about it. But if you guys want to hear me talk all about it, uh, I'm here to do it. So anyways... Let's start it right away, right, right away. So, uh, let's start with the CPU. The CPU, we got the i7-4790K. It is a pretty good processor, a CPU processor. Uh, computer processor, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to do no more. It's a really good processor. Uh, the reason why I chose this one is not because I can overclock it or that it's, you know, an Intel product. It's more like because I need the CPU to... Uh, help me in editing and making uh, playing games and recording and stuff like that and it's been hefty it's been doing hefty working lo load lately if you guys don't know we have Witcher 3 on the channel and 1080p 60 FPS can't be achieved without you know having the CPU there and you know, trying to get all of this things together and try to make a video out of it and it did it, it takes approximately an hour now to just make a 20 minute video with 1080p 60fps and I was like absolutely stunned by, by the fact that it could do that or it's part of helping it uh, render and all that of course and then what is better without I don't even know how to say this <laughs> what is better of a GPU what is a better CPU without a GPU there we go that's what I'm trying to say what is better without a GPU, you know? You gotta have a GPU with a CPU to make it work all the best. So the GPU I have is the MSI 970, GTX 970, 4GB uh, or approximate 3.5GB which most people wanna make it technical. Um, overclock edition of the GG graphics card. So I didn't even know this was a thing. I thought they were gonna use a reference card. But apparently we're using a overclock edition of a reference card in a sense, and I guess that's a thing we could use for, from MSI, which I I don't hate. I mean, I just I benchmarked it with Valley, I benchmarked it with a few other games for the past two weeks, and yes, I am sorry if I'm late for this vlog. For this vlog. I forgot to start that off with that, <laughs> but obviously. I benchmarked it with a bunch of games. Borderlands was one. I put it on high texture. It was great. Witcher 3 put on pretty high textures. Pretty almost, almost, almost ultra high settings. Almost. I did do it once before I started recording because I was like, "Can you run it? Can this game run it?" <laughs> and it did. It ran it. But it's just that I don't know how how long will it last. Like when I start recording and 
course, it, it happened to me when I started recording that it thumbed down and you know, minimized and all that stuff. But yeah, of course, that's what I thought it would be from the settings and stuff. And I also tested it out on Dead Island. I did some Dota 2 testings. I did some a lot of different games. I already downloaded a lot of games, played them, and they worked amazingly fine. They're above 30 FPS, of course. They're all, they're around. 60 FPS at the moment, um, with drivers fixing them, they'll most likely go up to 60 FPS on its own with you know, drivers and all that stuff with the games at Witcher 3. Um, but yeah, that's my GPU. Next is the RAM, which is the 16 gigabytes DDR3 2133. I think it was Corsair Vengeance. I'm not sure or G Skills. I don't know. I I think it's one of those guys. I forgot. I forgot which one I ordered. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been two weeks since I've ordered this computer, or three weeks. No, actually four. Yeah, four. It's been four weeks since I've ordered this computer, and I haven't seen the order list as often as I usually do before um, when I first ordered it. Uh, but yeah, it's a the the RAMs chosen are 16 gigabytes because it was really much, pretty much um, what I need for importing my stuff and doing some of the typical things that I would typically need RAM for, you know, games need RAMs, CPU needs some RAM to deliver the, the memory and stuff and all that. So that's why I chose those and the frequency of 2133 isn't that bad either because I think it's, it, it, well, I mean, 1866 would have been a better choice, but who knows, or, the frequency won't affect too much, FPS wise the same thing, it doesn't really affect too much. and. Only it only affects for video editing and video editing and photo editing. And that's all it does. It doesn't have anything beyond that point. And so yeah, it's really not a big deal or anything for me on RAM specs. All right, moving on, we've got the motherboard, which is the Gigabyte Z97 SLI. A lot of people really like the Gaming Seven one, the Gigabyte Gaming Seven. I thought about getting it. But in the end, I just chose to just stick with the SLI because pricing-wise, it's just different. Like one is better than the other, and I thought that the other one had kind of like a US less USBs. I think I remember it seeing or PS PCI cable or something. I don't remember what it was that I didn't want of it and because it was less plugs for it. So I chose to go to the SLI, and it's not bad. It I'm of course I'm planning to get an SLI with the motherboard on the motherboard, so there might be a double GTX 970 which will give me a total output of 7 gigabytes not 4 if you guys don't want to I mean not 8 if you guys don't want to go technical um, but yeah overall I, I mean this this motherboard will be best fitted for me so I can use to SLI and change it up and all that so I can deal with it anyways let's move on to the memory we got the primary hard drive which is the overall Operating operating system and all that stuff on it. This is the SSD drive. This is a 240 Kingston SSD drive, 240 gigabytes SSD Kingston drive. Okay, I, I hope I said that. <laughs> but anyways, the Kingston drive is what I, or the SSD is what I needed because it's been overall what I have been missing on the laptop over here that's recording with me, and the. SSD is what's important to many of the things because it speeds up all the processing work and so far the SSD has been doing well. I don't use too much of the SSD because it's just for installation folders and stuff. I leave it there for installing all my programs which is going to have like OBS, got games, no none of the games actually, I'm going to talk about that later but no not the games, uh, it stores up my Microsoft stuff like the Microsoft Windows 8 I mean 8.1 and maybe 10 when it comes out of course because they get a free upgrade for that and I have like face cam footage or the face cam software I have to put in like uh, recording software and all that's hefty junk that you have to deal with of course moving on to the secondary hard drive which is my one no no not one not one not 1 1.5 but two terabytes HDD hard drive disk drive hard drive disk drive <laughs> that's HDDD <laughs> triple D's <laughs> never mind never mind um, but yes it's it's a two terabyte hard drive and apparently I have it two terabyte because I was thinking I'm gonna be doing a lot of recording still and now that I have a new computer it's gonna be upgraded to 1080p or not all footage but most footage 
will be from here on out 1080p when there's a new series 1080p more like most likely and I was thinking it's gonna be a lot of more memory driven so I'm gonna have to be very careful with it so I had to take a two terabyte drive and so it's and it also stores all my games so obviously it's been a very well holder for everything and I also have a 1.5 terabyte drive here you guys can see it hopefully and that's my uh, storage for all the raw footage that I need to use for editing so when when I want to start editing a video I have to transfer it to this baby here and it will eventually be used to pull out and start working on for rendering, and re rendering and editing stuff <laughs> anyways so that's it and of course for memory stuff like storage wise I am going to upgrade it of course I need to upgrade to a uh, one terabyte SSD drive. Of course, I'm not gonna switch to primary SSD because I don't see it going any farther than 240. Like it doesn't it doesn't look like I will I will like install a bunch of different random programs that makes it go up to 240. If it does, then I'll probably try to uninstall some that doesn't feel necessary, of course. And so I want a one terabyte SSD drive to use so I can store up the games that I want to log load in up. Because the games are pretty much, you know, hefty when you install like a hundred of them. Even Gary's mod is like over a hundred if you add mods in them. And GTA is like over 50 gigabytes. So I have to probably find myself a way to get the one terabyte SSD. And I will also add in a six terabyte or four terabyte HDD. And maybe if there's more, like if it's beyond one terabyte for the SSD or if there's beyond six gigabytes or terabytes. <laughs> Six gigabytes. That's little. Six terabytes of HDD. Um, it would be just what I'm gonna get if that's what happens during that time, and I'll upgrade the memory for sure for that. Um, but no clue. I'm not gonna be upgrading my CPU, and I'm not gonna be upgrading my RAM in any time soon, or I don't think so because they don't. They're they're all good anyway, so it'll probably last for a while. Um, but anyways, let's move into the power unit, which is the PSU and the wattage and the electricity that powers the whole computer. I have a 700 watt standard brick with 80 bronze, I think 80 plus bronze, I'm not sure if I'm correct. And I'm not sure why I chose 600, I was choosing 600 thinking I would get a 600 watt power brick, but apparently not, it is going to it went up to an upgrade, so it became a 700 PSU, and uh, I'm like stunned to that, that it happened to do that. So yeah, we got a 700 watt computer here, and of course I see myself upgrading so to an SLI, and it doesn't really go beyond 500, so or it goes beyond 500 by a little bit smudge. Um, if I overclock, then it just goes to 600 at least. So 700 would be a perfect number for everything that I have to do with certain things. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's mostly it for the whole, the whole computer. I don't know how to s specify what case, case I'm using because it's on the website and it's really customizable. Like, it, no, we're not customizable, it's really custom. Like, I never, I haven't even found this same casing <laughs> in the uh, new egg in Amazon and some other websites that might sell it. And I, I tried to find it, but I was like, uh, I don't know, I don't see it. I, mean, I couldn't find it, so obviously that's a weird thing. But anyways... Yep, yep, yep. So that's mostly it for the whole iVibe Powers computer that I bought. On oh, optical drive, you guys don't care really much. So, and then the operating system I just mentioned it earlier too. So, yeah, I'm looking at it to remember if, the, if I forgot something. I don't think I forgot anything. Yeah, overall we've we've got that whole computer, and so far it's been really nice. I've been working a lot faster now. Work's getting a lot faster. Double monitor is finally achieved. Double monitor, yeah, the second monitor. The double monitor is finally achieved, so I can finally work faster, work harder. Hopefully, the internet speed is what I need to up my ante because my internet speed is pretty slow at the moment. Um, I don't want to blame my company for doing it, but I, I mean, their upload is being terrible right now. And I mean, I'm thinking about switching it. So, anyways, let's move on to the review. I buy power review. Um, the company, of course, we're running on halfway. <laughs> We're well, running on 15 minutes instead. This might take a longer time, so bear with me, guys. Um, the review for the iBuy Power. So this is the people who are interested in buying from iBuy Power. 
and is wondering about uh, how they are as today, as of today. Because a lot of people in the past have, as I mentioned, talked crap about them because they did terrible as a company. They don't, you know, they don't just simply build a computer and just simply safely put it into a box and ship it off to, I don't know, to the East Coast if you're living in the East Coast. And yeah, it's really hard to say exactly what's the deal, what's the problem with them. I'm not saying there is a huge problem because right now my computer has been two weeks old. Um, give and take, I'll probably wait 11 months or a year to see what happens. If it breaks down in half a year, then you know I'm gonna have to upgrade on my own. Like I, I this time around, I am actually gonna have to replace the parts on my own this time because I'm not shipping it back. Because I've heard people say that they shipped it back, never got got it back till six months or something. And so I feel like if I ship it back to them, it will become a graveyard area, and I will just be like sending my computer to the graveyard. And then I'm like, no, I haven't had the time to love it enough for a year. And so yeah, of course I have to deal with that if it ever comes within this year, of course. Anyways, back to the point to review. Um, First of all, let me talk about the experience of the buying of this um, because it's really important to those who really are interested in buying it. And uh, of course, I did not ship it. I didn't ask for shipping, so I just so this experience might be not for you guys who are interested in the shipping portion of the whole experience. I did not ship, but I can tell you this: if you live across the country or you live in Canada, like maybe on the east coast of the country's top of Canada, um, do know that there is some minor risks, or maybe major risks, up to you, how, how you decide, that if you're shipping it, companies who tend to ship it are not going to do well in their shipping. They, I'm not saying the delivery companies are bad or good, I'm not saying anybody's bad or either, like, I'm not trying to go towards that, I'm trying to say that there is a risk that these trucks will be like, dum, 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 bang, bang, bang. Flying all over the place like a crazy madman. Mad like, literally, the computer's gonna go crazy while flying around in those shipments. But I'm not saying every one of them, every one of those computers are going through that same situation. I'm saying at least a good portion, or, um, I don't know, 10 percent, 20 percent of people are having that issue there. And that's why I'm a power not to blame sometimes. Maybe the shipping's the most blown to blame. I don't know, who knows? I don't know, I'm not the one working, so I'm, I'm not paid to talk about that, for sure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to defame them or anything, so... And then, iBot Power might be at fault sometimes, they might not notice that, and then... Once you ship it back, they're not gonna fix it for you, because they're busy fixing other computers, or making new computers for other people to make, because they're like, Hey, you know, leave this to the side, we'll come back to it later. Five hours, ten hours, five days, a week, never came back. <laughs> Until the person calls up, like, a month later. Nope. Sorry, didn't know you had your thing. Oh wait, oh yeah, that guy. Oh no, never mind, never mind. I'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. And then five hours and ten, uh, yeah. so and so forth. You guys can get the idea. You get the idea. Um, but anyways, the iBuy Power, I bought from iBuy Power on single to mile, uh, the May of fifth, May fifth. So I'm gonna start calling days as we go on. And I was like, hey, the deals are great. Five percent off for all the thousand dollar beers that are above and. Um, what else? And then there was like some good cutoff prices for the GPU, um, for the CPU and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, my time to shine here. Bought it, and it went into processing. May 6, it processed, the credit card processed through it. Fantastic, no problem there. And then it started, they started building, or they started gathering the materials for the computer on the end of May 6. Okay, great. Great progress. Really, really fast. Really, really fast. May 7th, we've got the computer all built up. Like, they're starting to build it all together, put it all together. And then at the end of May 7th, they, they finished, like, testing it out on some uh, benchmark or something. I don't know exactly what they did because I don't work there, of course. And I was like, okay, I'm going to probably receive it on, uh, on uh, May 8th or something like that. Like, probably May 8th might be the day I might receive it. Or May 7th, I might receive it or something, I don't know. Um, and of course during that time, I expected them to call me instead. Because I didn't know Will Call was 
to call them, not to call me, which is very disappointing and weird because will call is like expecting a call, not people calling them. And sometimes, and the website also specifies that <laughs> you'll be getting a call or something, I think. It, or it made it feel like, uh, maybe I didn't read it right, maybe, but I, I feel like it. I felt like it should be them calling us because we're busy in the day. We can't sometimes take notice of the the call time and stuff like that. We have to always think about it. But yeah, that's that was a little bit disappointing and weird to think about. And so, um, yeah, back to the point. May 8th, Friday, it was a day where I waited the whole d d d d d day for the thing to finish, but it was stuck in the packaging stage on the end of May 7th, and I was like, Okay, this is a little bit awkward. And so Friday, I recorded a bunch of videos while I was happening to wait for that day. And nothing happens. May 8th, I knew they were inside on a Saturday. They were working on a Saturday, but only for the first part of the day and all the way to 3, and that's just mostly it. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to get a call from them on Saturday. They'll probably be closed and stuff. And so, May 9th, Sunday, they're closed. May 10th, Monday started getting a little annoyed because you know they're stuck at packaging they were in good progress until the time it's stuck at process packaging I just felt what the hell is going on so I emailed my sales representative I'm not gonna say his name because it's gonna be sad for him because I don't want him to be injured in whatever I'm saying I'm not trying to say anything bad to him or anything but he he is gotta have to keep up with emails for sure but anyways my sales representative did not get back to me during that day, of course, and I did send an email at the end of their working hour, like probably 4 o'clock-ish, around there, PST. And then, next day, no email from the sales rep, and I was like, okay, this is very disappointing. I, I, I thought he would come, like, hurry up and, you know, respond to everybody in, like, one full day's work. But no, not at all. Never heard from him, and, and I'll and, and you'll see later. He'll, he'll he'll come back eventually, but I went onto the Facebook page of the I Buy Power page, and absolutely did it at the wrong time again. Uh, contacted them on Facebook at around five o'clock ish, four o'clock ish. They were reluct reluctantly online still at around five, and the guy responded on the page, and I was like, oh okay. I sent it my order number. All right, cool waiting for a response probably by tomorrow or so and didn't get a response till probably three o'clock because I started sending another post again on the Facebook page because they did not listen and the person behind it luckily responded and responded and I was like yes and the person looked into my order and the person said oh you're doing a will call okay let's send this uh, baby to the uh, will call section we'll we're ready to let you pick it up now and I was like, oh baby yeah ooh and I was like I was really excited I was like finally finally I was like for how long does it take to freaking package a computer it's just simply put a box in put the other boxes in put some styrofoam on and tape and put it into the wool call section of everything and of course that's not what they did and of course yeah anyways Anyway, same day um, on that Wednesday, I believe, on May something, I forgot it. I lost my counting already. May 12th, May 13th. I don't remember no more. I'm going to say, let me check the calendar here. Just give me a second. Give me a second, guys. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. May 13th. Yeah, May 13th. May 13th. Uh, they finally responded. And I appreciate the Facebook page uh, person, the person who's taking time to work on the Facebook page I think I think that person behind it kudos to that person for responding really quickly and it makes me a happy customer that the Facebook page is more responsive than the freaking sales representative uh, sales representative and I'm like oh, sales representative sucks <laughs> and so um, they said that I had to call them and I was like oh and that's where I learned that it's a disappointing thing that I I have to call them, they're not calling me, and they don't want to take the time, you know, to do that kind of thing, and have, like, it's just one person do that. It would have been much more quicker, like, you know, like, more faster. And so, um, Thursday, May 14th, sales representative finally emailed me, 
man, that was already too late. Dude, too slow. Way too slow. The Facebook page is like immediately just ships it down and like shoots it down and like stuff like that. I'm thinking that the sales representative updates your progress page. So I think he lays it out after he finished everything. Like after he finishes all the way to the packaging stage, he's like, okay, I'm lazy. I'm not gonna switch this out or I'm just gonna leave it here for them to package it up if they want to. Um, I just realized, or I don't know, I'm not realizing, I just feel like it's just weird that that had to happen. So, anyways, May 15 is a Friday, so from May 15 to May 16, 17, May 18, I had to wait, of course, and on Thursday, of course, I forgot to say this, May 14, Thursday, I had to call them in the morning, and... There was this little issue, this little tiny little issue that I had where I talked to the guy and he was, uh, the operator was nice, the operator was a friendly lady, nice lady. And then she shipped me over to the, ship me over to the customer service which is where we can make our appointment for picking up the computer. And the guy behind it was like, okay, at first he was okay, he was all nice and he was all like slowly doing things calmly. and. Uh, I asked for information, made an appointment, and by the end of the call, he started trying to throw me out of the call. I'm not, I don't know, I don't know who it is, but I didn't ask for a name. I don't want to ask for a name because I don't want to be troublesome at them or for them. And the guy was like, "Okay, bye bye. Oh, oh, okay, okay." And I was like trying to ask for the address to be exactly. After I finished asking it the first time, I kind of got confused because he kept speaking. He keeps speaking so fast. I don't, I, I mean, when I, when I hear some rap music, it's a different story, but if this is speech and you're trying to speak very fast to get rid of me, it's not really easy because I can't get it <laughs> if you speak too fast. And of course, he spoke so fast that I couldn't get it, and so I asked him for a second time, and he was about to say, like, goodbye, bye, but of course I did, I'm sorry for him because I kind of took time to actually went on on my uh, phone because I didn't have the order number on me exactly of course that was one thing that I did which kind of maybe made him want to go off the phone sure he did want to go off the phone for a second though but <laughs> he's like oh, maybe he might come back and hurry up and get through this and then he's like just give me your name and I was like okay but yeah I did give him a hard time at the first part patience he was having at first and then secondly at the end of the call he quickly threw me off and I was like Okay, so like, yeah, there's only one guy on the call or something, customer service got to have more than one person on the phone, and not this person, customer service is the point of not having, you know, impatience, they have to have patience to, you know, talk to the customer and help them out, not, you know, push them out of the way and say like, I have other customers to deal with, you know, you, you can't value a customer like that, but, I mean, I'm not them, I'm not working for them, I'm not working with them, and I'm not the boss of them, so uh, I'm all, I'm just all opinions here and where I'm at right here, so yeah, that's what I thought of when I went to the customer service stuff. Um, and so yeah, back to the point, Monday, May 18th, I believe I just said, yeah, I think May 18th, I'll assume. May 18th, Monday, I received it in the morning, it took me 30 minutes, which kind of, there was another person behind it. Um, got the computer stuff. Apparently they did not actually package it, which was a little disappointing because I thought when they went to packaging stage they would package it immediately, but they didn't. They chose not to and they just sent me the stuff and into the hand and uh, went home, nighttime, set it up, benchmarked it and all that stuff and the rest was history. And so yeah, the overall experience was pretty blah. It was pretty blah. I would say this whole Overall, the company would get a 7 out of 10, I would say. Um, you can say 6.5 or 6 if you guys are like, went to a worse experience or something, a, a worse experience or something, but I can't really vouch for it because I don't go through that ex experience, so yeah. Sorry about that. I had to put out my nose. My nose was getting a little itchy. Um, and it blocked my speech a little bit. But yeah, overall, I would say that they had a seven out of ten. You guys can six. You can say say. You can say six out of ten. I was gonna say say. My bad. <laughs> My bad. 
Um, 6 out of 10 if you guys want to, depending on your situation or experience. But for me, I say 7 out of 10 because I did a will call. And overall, the computer didn't do damage, nothing happened badly. Um, wire organization was pretty eh. It's like down inside the bottom section. It should be in the back. All the wire should be in the back. So it might be a little heftiness in my part when I start upgrading or adding new stuff or replacing something. But yeah, overall, I would say that this company is okay. It, it, customer service was the biggest issue out of this company still. I thought customer service was better than this or better than what it was previously. But it only got better by just one inch or something. And... I recommend them, uh, well, let me, let me say the pros and cons, of course, of customer service on their end. The pros, very responsive on Facebook pages and Twitter pages, obviously, and they're really more, they're, they're much more helpful than, uh, than iBuyPower on the other end, which is customer service calling on the phone and customer service or sales representatives that they have sent to all customers or, yeah, to all customers at the very least. And I'm like, this has got to go weirdly. And I'm thinking that it's probably based on anonymity. If you're, if you're being anonymous, you're more helpful or you're more friendlier than you are when you're talking on phone. And maybe email sometimes it might be a little bit too personal because you give out your name there. So it's best if it was taken away. Like, we don't, I really think that it would be best if it was taken away and switched around to Facebook and Twitter responses for sales representative. Like instead of sales representative, we might just shoot them away, put them into freaking Twitter and Facebook and you guys can say like, oh, you guys want help or you guys want to know your progress, do check out the website. If not, you guys can ask for the questions and help on Facebook or Twitter. And I mean, it might overload them, the people at Facebook and Twitter, but they are very responsive. They are pretty nice and generous to check out your order and all that and they did take the time to help you out at least at the very least um if there's two people involved then that's great that's better because you get the more people there is in customer service the more easier things can go like the flow of customer understanding and customer needing help and stuff like that um and then the cons which is the bad stuff is that the sales representatives are unresponsive even though they're supposed to be your sales representative even if there's 100 email i would have to look through that because that's my job my job is to get through all these emails respond as best as i can if it's a junk mail throw it away something like that you know or give a call to some people it, and, and i mean sales representatives are not supposed to be uh, those who are entrepreneurs they have to go out there to invest money and time and stuff to other businesses but when they're not supposed to be doing that they're supposed to represent us and help us mostly not doing other things at the moment you know, best to the best of their ability of course and all the way to the hours and then for the customer service on the phone i'm not saying they're bad either they're just probably and, and machinery like they did an automated system when you start calling them and it's just more of a piece of crap i hate automated system a lot of people do Trust me, a lot of people hate them because they just don't respond to you like a human. Nobody likes something like a robot just responding to them. So, yeah. Um, so customer service was the biggest issue with them still. Build-wise, I would say pretty okay. Wire management, as I mentioned, is terrible. It's just, eh. But everything else is checked out good. Like all the things you want on your, in your computer, most definitely is there. Nothing broken, nothing falling apart nothing wearing out at the moment yet maybe it's maybe in a year we don't know we'll check it out in a year of course or we'll use it up to a year and see how it goes from there how far it fares and so the last thing would be the pricing and the deals and stuff they have amazing deals of course and of course you guys can get a bang for your buck for that website or for that company compared to like I don't know, Digital Storm and uh, I don't know, some other good brand company like, oh yeah, PG Systems, one of them I recently found out about, um, and like all the others. Like, they're all great companies, of course, but they do not offer the good prices, they offer the real, real world prices for you if you want to buy a computer from them. But for iPad Power, they're the more definite version of a computer that you want to buy for cheap or buy for. A good price at the very least but you have to always wait for the deal and it's not a bad thing 
um, but it's a pretty good thing at the same time. Like it's it's pretty much a very very good way to bring in more customers and way to bring in a very uh, a very heavy loaded workstation and stuff like that. Like if you want to have business, you gotta have it in a smart way. But yeah, I'm not saying the other companies are bad. Of course, as I mentioned, they all have great, amazing builds. They have a lot of like triple A stuff, maybe triple A for business uh, rankings. They might have, I don't know, a bunch of great customers and a bunch of great, you know, stuff. And I do want to, you know, help them if, or buy from them if I ever have the chance next time around. Like I might just give it a shot and see what I might see out of them or get offered from them. But overall, there are great companies out there. Origin, Puget, uh, Digital Storm, NCIX. All those companies are great. Just hands down. But um, right now, it's just iBot Power that I got stuck with because they have great deals. Um, but anyways, if you guys ask me a question about will I buy from or will you sh no should you buy from them or should you not? That one is that is all up to you. I gave you all the information that I can that I know of. Um, so if you guys want to buy it, just be sure that you guys do not live too far from the west coast because there is the heftiness of the shipping, of course, that's one big issue. And of course, it's harder for you to contact the company. You gotta have to fly over here and, and walk in there in person and say, Hey, I need help, man! <laughs> but it's not. It, it, apparently, that's the better way, I think, because being in person is much more easier to communicate across them because you're like, you're, you, mean, you mean business when you mean business. You gotta mean business when you mean business. But if you uh, want to take the risk as well, if you live across there, it's fine. I mean, a lot of I've heard a lot of success stories. I heard a lot of videos and seen a lot of videos and a lot of comments on how they got the computer across the East Coast in Canada, and they are having an amazing time. So I mean, I'll say it's 20 to 10 percent chance that it might be broken or just damaged or wore out very quickly. But who knows? It all depends on you and how you build your computer. Anyways, that's mostly it today. Um, if you guys have any questions, I can answer to the best of my ability. As I mentioned, I do not work for them, I'm not sponsored by them, and I do not know how their system works to detail, like, detail by detail, if there's anything like that. But anyways, do ask me questions in the comment box down below. Leave a like, comment, no, leave a like, and subscribe if you guys want something of the sort. I don't know. I don't know. Comments or description box down below for more information about the computer specs and the information for the channel and stuff like that. And then, lastly, annotations will lead you to other previous Ross vlogs or pre one previous Ross vlog, which is the whole setup, which is what's happening behind me right now. And what else? Uh, I think that's it. And then, the bottom annotations, three annotations, will lead you to other series like The Witcher 3 is new, and you guys can check that out or should check it out. It's pretty fun for so far. Um, that's mostly it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys next Ross vlog on another video of mine. And I hope you guys have a great, amazing day. We can night or whenever you watch this. So Roz.